Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at something I haven't taken a look at in a long, 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 long time. And of course, that is a Figma. And this time, it's not just one, it's two. And of course, these are two of the little armory Figmas, namely Asato Mio and the newer Toyosaki Enna. And before I get into it, I will mention that once again, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want some Figma of your own, then check out that link down there in the description. So first off, before busting these things out of the box, yes, it does say Tomi on there. As in, the toy company commonly known for making baby toys. But this time around, it's just straight up guns. As you can see, specifically, it does say Tomi Tech on here. In Japan, that is the branch of Tomi, or Takara Tomi, that makes model railways. But it does seem when they're not busy making model railways, they're making automatic rifles for anime girls? Anyway, as you can see from the back of the box, this is a figure that mixes both figure and model kit as the guns themselves are a model kit. So just so you know in advance, you will need a nippers and possibly some more tools to clean these up. But anyway, there is a whole lot of stuff available for this range, just like you can see on the back of the box right here. Some really epic stuff at that, but anyway, that is enough about the box, let's bust this thing open and see what we've got. There is the front and back of the inner packaging, just in case you're curious. And both boxes include inserts that have some extras on them. This is a quick view of them right now, but we'll get to them a little bit later. Also worth noting that both boxes come with inserts with some stuff on them, but scissors required, and I'll talk about those more later. So there we've got everything completely unboxed, all over here on the left, that's what comes with Mio, and everything over here on the right, that's what comes with Enna. So with Mio here we get the typical Figma stand, extra face, extra skirt, bag, eight extra hands, four rifle magazines, five pistol magazine, walkie talkie, pistol, spare wrist joint, and the parts for making up the assault rifle. Moving on over to Enna, and once again we have that Figma stand, one extra face, eight extra hands, walkie talkie, pistol, spare wrist joint, and with her we get parts for an assault rifle and a pistol. So first off we're going to be taking a look at the figures themselves. I'm going to start with Mio because this figure has been around for quite a while. This one right here is a reissue. And all in all, this seems to be the flagship character when it comes to the Little Armory series. It's definitely the one that I would have recognized the most from Japanese hobby shops like Yellow Submarine, Vokes, etc. It's the one that I would have seen on the Little Armory boxes more often than any other. Basically, it's definitely one of those things that's really in right now when it comes to anime, and that is pretty much an anime girl with a whole lot of military stuff. So, that pretty much sums it up. So essentially, as dodgy as it is, it's a schoolgirl with a machine gun. I'm not gonna comment on that. So the next one in here, of course, is Enna. So just like we saw with the other one, this is featuring full military schoolgirl gear, and it does have a bit of a kind of, well, what I can call an odd stylistic choice. Basically, the eyes there, that's not my camera, those are literally that faded looking. Of course, that is a stylistic choice to match with the box art that you normally see on all of the little armory accessories kits, and just like what you can see right here. I definitely felt that was worth pointing out. This may be something you like, maybe you don't, but it's definitely an obvious stylistic choice. All in all, this does look pretty cool. The camo effects are quite nice, but I did kind of feel like... I don't know, I thought it was just me at first that the paint applications on this just aren't the way I thought that Figma used to be. At first it was like, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just rose-tinted glasses of the way they used to look, but... I took a quick look around the collection of some of the older Figma that I have, and I don't see anything that is this poor when it comes to color application. My first thought was, is Figma just getting worse, or is it this right here? So I bust open a couple of recent Figma that I bought, which were Overwatch Figma, and... That's not the case with those. And speaking of which, I do have a Reaper coming up really soon, as in really soon, as in maybe tomorrow? But yeah, for the most part, the paint applications on here are not that great. They're much better on Mayo right here, but not quite as good as some other lines of Figma. Strange. So my question to you guys who have been keeping up with Figma releases lately, how have you been finding the paint apps? Good? Bad? I'll throw a poll up in the corner right now. Let me know. So now moving on into the accessories, here's the overview we saw earlier on with everything that comes in here, and we're gonna start with Mio. So first off, as for the included hands, we've got the widespread hands we saw connected already. Also included then is this rack of hands. As for faces, we've got this fairly expressionless face, as well as what I can only describe as a dumbfounded face looking off to the left. To swap those out, you just pull off the front of the hair, off of the face plate, pop on the alternate one, and back on with the hair. So now moving on to the rest of the accessories and of course the main event in here is her trusty M4A1. 
So I will mention that this is a model kit. So this does come on a couple of sprues or runners, depending on what you want to call them. That's a black one and a khaki green one. There's the instructions there. It is pretty simple to put together, but you will need at least a side cutters or nippers, and you will definitely need glue because this does not snap together. So I will mention that this does come with some options. So you're going to have to choose which you're going to use because once you glue this, it's pretty much final. So we've got two different types of stocks, two different types of sights, and one little handle segment that can attach onto the front. Personally, I just went the vanilla route and did exactly what was shown on the box. So that's this right here. So of course, to attach this weapon, you're going to have to use the alternate hands. And I think the difference between these two holding hands here, the different trigger finger hands, is the top one there, that has the finger on the trigger, and this one has the finger off the trigger. So we're going to go with the trigger on the finger because someone's going to get hurt. It just pops in like that, then pops on like so. So anyway, that is what it looks like attached on there. And as usual with my reviews recently, this is what you look like somewhere in your collection, just for that kind of feel of how big and how much presence one of these figures has. So of course, this is a Figma. These are more suited to photo shoots and little photos and stuff like that than really being on a shelf. As you can see, she is a little bit lost in all of that. Compared to Gompla, she is a little bit on the small side unless you've got high grades. And compared to other bigger scale figures, once again, she might get a little bit lost in that collection. But anyway, that gun is looking pretty cool. However, I do feel it would look a lot better with an effect part like the one that came with the Figma Solid Snake. Also included in here is five additional magazines for the M4, so whatever she's planning, she's well prepared. These don't actually fit into the assault rifle itself. The one that's on there is actually just a shorter one glued on. These actually are stored in the little pocket sections on this utility belt around her waist and this one here on her leg. So if that wasn't enough, she also comes with a sidearm. This isn't a model kit, this just comes as a little plastic accessory. Just like before, this can be held in any of the four holding hands, that's two left, two right. In case the M4 didn't take care of business, she's also got five magazines of ammo for that. And they also slot into that belt, just like before. Same up there and down there. When the sidearm isn't in use, that can be stored in here as well. Get in there. So that's pretty cool that most of the supplementary accessories can be stored right here on the body. Pretty cool. Next up then we've got a walkie. This is pretty simple, just in black once again. Around on the back, it's got a little peg in there. And by peg, I mean hole because it's for using with this peg here in the palm of this hand. So that just attaches onto that like so. So that looks a little something like that right there. Next up then we've got this alternate left hand. What this is for is for holding those ammo magazines. Next up then in here we've got this shoulder bag. There's the front. There is the back. This has a little opened zipper section. You can stuff some stuff in like the walkie talkie right there but be careful of that little antenna while doing so. I nearly broke that off. And that's a shoulder bag so it should just pop up here on the shoulder. So all in all, this right here is a figment that can basically keep all of its accessories on the body all at the same time. So that's pretty damn cool. I'm impressed by that. And the last thing in here then is this, which is just an alternate skirt mold. So to attach this, you just yank off those legs, remove the skirt section, pop the other one in, and then pop the legs back on. So pretty simple. So there's another spin of what it will look like with the alternate skirt parts attached. And apparently these right here are more accurate to the original box art. But anyway, that is enough about Mio, let's move on to Enna. So once again, there's a bit of a throwback to the beginning of the review where I showed exactly what she came with. So let's take a look at everything one by one. So first up, as for hands, we've got that widespread pair of open hands. Once again, we do have a rack of hands. So as for her weapons, she's representing her home country right here with this Japanese Hawa Type 89. I almost did forget to mention that all of these weapons are 1 12th scale, so that means they will go with anything that is, well, 1 12th scale. So this time around, this weapon doesn't come with any permanent choices, so anything that can change on this weapon, which is two different items, can be changed whenever. The first of which is the bipod down here. There's two variant forms of this. That's this standard one here, which is folded up, and this variant right here of it extended out. So. These just clip on and off, so these aren't a permanent modification. Also in here we do have a bayonet, once again this isn't a permanent modification. That just slides down like this and then clips down the bottom, but I hate the feeling of this. Anyway, there it is attached for when she wants to get up close and stabby stabby. Anyway, once again to attach this, just on with the hand, like so. And that should pop in fairly simply, just like that right there. 
So unlike Mio, I'm gonna get her fully kitted up before I actually throw her up on that shelf for that final look. So what we've got next then is this pistol, as she doesn't have a left hand holding hand for this, the only real option seems to be to pop this out, stick the pistol in there, then use this particular left hand, and just kind of have her holding onto it like that. She also comes with a walkie, this time around in that khaki green. It doesn't have a peg on the back like the other one, but can be held in the hand like so. And when not in use, should pop in here like that. Unlike Mio, she only comes with one spare magazine, and she actually doesn't have anywhere to store it. I guess that means away with that. I almost forgot about the face plates. This does come with one extra one. This is the standard one, which is fairly expressionless. And there is the alternate one where she's looking a little bit pissed off. So anyway, there is what she will look like up on your shelf. And although she does look pretty cool, once again, these are a little bit on the small side, as you probably know if you collect Figma. So they might be a little bit dwarfed in your collection. But if you were making a decision between the two of these right here, I would have to say this one right here is okay. It does have some issues. But if you had to choose one, I'd go with Mio back there. She definitely has a lot more going on, a lot more stuff. And the fact that she can store it all on the body at the one time is pretty damn cool. Anyways, always that right there is it for the review. If you do want to see more Figma reviews in future, let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button as well just to let me know. There will be another one coming fairly soon, either tomorrow or the day after. That will be Figma Reaper. And I'll see how things go from there on out. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you do want one of your own, one of either of these, I do recommend Mio, not so much the other one. There is a pair of links down there in the description. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more reviews, and I'll see you next time.